All right, okay. <laughs> So hello, dears. Hello, hello, and uh, welcome to the continuation of our recording and our lecture in virology. And uh, for this lecture, we're going to continue now with the remaining RNA viruses until the end of our lecture. So ayan, nagpre-record lang yapunta because again, kulang na ang time. Nakachika na ako na medyo kulang na gilatong time, no? <laughs> if tomorrow pa ta or some other day pa ta mag-synchronous session for virology, no? And nag-apasa sa inyong compre. But anyway, ayan, so we'll have a pre-recorded lecture na lang to our uh, sa remaining RNA viruses para at least mahumanagyo nato siya. All right. Um, and also, um, just view this when you can. Okay, I believe murag magliso na mag-view ani kay hapit ng compre. Pero sana naman makalanta o ragyapon mo. All right. Okay, sige. So we're going to continue now um, with the Philo Viridae. All right. Now for the Philo Viridae, um, this is considered to be the most pathogenic. All right. This uh, family of viruses is considered to be the most pathogenic among all the viruses that cause viral hemorrhagic fevers. No, so katung mga uh, arbovirus, di ba? Usually, ang mga arboviruses ang ilang gina cause na disease kay mga encephalitis, but they can also cause viral hemorrhagic fevers. Now, among them, no, the most pathogenic and the most severe, or the ones that really cause the most severe viral hemorrhagic fevers, is your Philo viridae na family. All right. Now, again, the characteristic: this is a pleomorphic virus, enveloped. All right. Very important. Filamentous. Nako. Can I know where dearest filamentous yung appearance? All right. And irregular capsid with single-stranded RNA. Again, basta ganin na ay question sa boards or sa exam. Filamentous perfology na huwag na mag-isep. That is filo viridae. That's why yung alam filo. It's because ang yung shape kay morag filament or ang filo. It means Uh, thread-like, all right? So, it's a thread. As you can see, it's a picture. Naman. All right? So, it's a thread. No? Thread-like, that's the, uh, hence the word philo. All right? Ayan. So, dili na, dili na kay Filipino siya, no? Charat. <laughs> philo means thread-like or again, it looks like a filament, no? Filamentous iyahang appearance. And the configurations of the virus under the electron, micro, uh, electron microscope may be similar to the number six, Uh, letter U or perishang circular. All right. So, Marsha Gorm actually, no, pero this is a virus. Ayan. All right. Now, what are the viruses under this uh, family? Of course, you have the most popular Ebola. All right. The Ebola virus, uh, which has five species, you have the Zaire Ebola virus, the Sudan Ebola virus, the Cote de Evoa. Uh, Ebola virus or Ivory Coast, the Bundi Bugyo Ebola virus, and the Reston Ebola virus. The Reston Ebola virus, kanuni. The Reston Ebola virus causes disease in non-human primates, so sa mga mga monkeys. The rest they usually cause disease in humans. But among the Ebola viruses, uh, na mention na subspecies, usually ang Zaire. Sudan and Bundi Bugyo usually ang makakos ng mga epidemics or outbreaks. All right. Now aside from your Ebola, of course, you have the Marburg virus. And this Marburg virus again, sha ang naay shepherd's crook appearance. Na ko talaga mga shepherd's crook na yarn. Do not be, do not forget that. No. So again, kung sa viro na ay mar na ay shepherd's crook, which is your Marburg, di ba na po yung shepherd's crook sa para na mention na nato na. You have two, di ba? Sa protozoa you have Chiromastix. Mesnili, and for um, the nematodes, you have Mansonella streptos. Or kana ko, ah, na ko sana naman, na remember pa. Okay, all right. Now again, these are the two major viruses in the family Philo viridae. All right. Now for transmission, your transmission is through secretions, pa rin. Usually, um, primarily rather, uh, secretions from the body, not respiratory, but secretions from the body, such as blood, urine. Feces, no sweat, even. All right, um, and that is transmitted from human to human transmission. All right, uh, so possible put ang respiratory droplets. All right, pero not not kaayo ang respiratory droplets. It's through mo. It's through um, other body fluids put. Pero possible ang respiratory droplets. Also accidental injection and also the use of contaminated syringes. True enough in Africa where this is endemic, kaning Ebola and Marburg kung asa buo gikan. Majority of the outbreaks happen because of improper Um, caring of the sick because sa una no katong mga first outbreaks pa lang of Ebola wa pa sila kabalon sang disease uh, they care for the sick no without using any PPE without using any gloves so therefore ayan pwede siyang uh, pwede silang mahawa or dito nakuha ang outbreaks no so communal because again wala sila proper PPE and they didn't know how to handle such disease that was in the first mga outbreaks all right um again also 
aside from that, even if namatay na ang patient, no? Uh, iyahan mga body fluids, blood, and mga other body fluids can also be infectious pa rin. So, in Africa, napos sila mga funeral practices, di ba, na kanadyong um, mag-contact sa, de- sa dead, no? Walay... Um, Anything, walay, walay PPN also possible dito po siya nakuha. Alright, so majority of the outbreaks due are from uh, are nosocomial. Alright, and usually these outbreaks happen again in Africa. Alright, this is endemic in Africa. Now for the disease that it causes, again, it causes hemorrhagic fever. So it causes the most severe among all the viral hemorrhagic fevers. So it starts first as a flu-like uh, disease no, with symptoms similar to the flu like myalgia, no, tiredness, and headache. It will. It, it is followed by nausea, vomiting, and also a rash may be developed. Subsequently, in the long run, hemorrhage occurs uh, inside the body. All right, and death occurs in many as 90% of the patients infected with the disease. Now, why is it also ineffective as an outbreak in Africa? It's because transmission is very rapid, no? And efficient po ang replicate sa, uh, efficient ang replication sa Ebola sa imuhang body. Ayahang replication happens in uh, the monocytes, macrophages, and paspas ka ayahang replication. And paspas siya mo produce mga new virions. So therefore, mas paspas siya mo, uh, mo uh, infect and mo spread. All right? Um, but, at least, ang imuhang patients infected, they're only infectious when the symptoms are present. Alright? Uh, not pareha sa COVID and other diseases na you can be infectious even if you are asymptomatic. For Ebola, uh, you are only infectious if, again, you are symptomatic. Okay, alright. Ayan. Now, of course, for diagnosis, BSL-4 pa rin ang required because, again, this is very, very contagious and very dangerous pod. Um, For diagnosis, again, electron microscopy, cell culture can be used, and immunohistochemistry. Of course, RT-PCR um, and serological tests such as ELISA and immunofluorescence may be used. Now, there have been re- uh, recent outbreaks in Africa of your Ebola. No, Ang um, pinaka-recent is, katong pinaka-dakog yun is 2014 to 2016 outbreak. It uh, affected the West Africa, the mga region, pilatoka countries dito. And it also spread to other countries such as sa Italy, sa US, and sa UK. Pero they were able to contain sa mga other countries to mga ilahang gagmay na mga uh, cases of Ebola. So mutong wala, wala rin spread sa country, sa other countries. But in West Africa, daghang na affected. So it's 2014 to 2016. That's the largest Ebola outbreak in history, all right? And currently, as we are speaking right now, there is a current outbreak of Ebola in uh, Guinea, sa Africa, North Province, sa Guinea, if I'm not mistaken. October 8, 2021, siya nag-start now, all right? So, uh, there are many mi- small, mga small outbreaks in, the, in Africa because, again, this is a very endemic disease dito, all right? Ayan. So, that's for uh, the diagnosis. And in 2018 outbreak, and even now, they're using this vaccine, your RVSV. Zibov uh, vaccine. All right. Now, RVSV, the VSV is the viral vector, and that is known as your uh, vesicular stomatitis virus. No. So, this is again a normal virus of humans, and this is used as a viral vector for the RVSV Zibov. So, muna meaning sa, sa VSV dira. All right. So, it's a viral vector. So, what happens is, kanisha na virus, gibutangan og antigen. All right. Um, or gene to which yang express ang glycoprotein sa Ebola. All right? And muna siya inject sa mga patients. But this vaccine, RVSV Zibov, it's only effective against the Zare Ebola virus. All right? So Zare Ebola virus so siya effective ay mohang RVSV Zibov. Uh, because again, your uh, Zare Ebola virus also causes the most um, severe, no? And it has the highest mortality point, ang imuhang Zare Ebola virus. So, ang imuhang subspecies sa Ebola virus was named kung asa na area po siya nakitaan. And your Ebola, nangalan, is also coming from the river sa una sa Zare. And kanin Zare is an old name of the country now, which is your Democratic Republic of Congo. Alright? So, sa Africa, yun siya nakita. Alright. Now, Marburg, on the other hand, Marburg virus also causes the same disease. Alright? Um, Marburg was um, Yahang name, it originated from Germany because the disease was first isolated in Germany, Lake Marburg, all right, after um, in a laboratory setting, no, laboratory contamination. German laboratory workers were infected by this virus while um, treating or while examining or while using an African green monkey 
uh, cell, no? Or using an African green monkey para sa ihang cells for culturing, no? For culturing the polio or for making the polio vaccine. They were infected by the Marburg virus uh, during sa ilang pag pagkutaw or paggamit sa imuhang um, paggamit sa imuhang uh, African green monkey kidney uh, or African green monkey na animal during that time. So na-infect sila paggamit nila ito para magamas sila polio vaccine and then dito na Naku ang ala na Marburg because it was uh, started or it started in Marburg, Germany. Okay, all right, ayan. So again, Marburg virus, it's much less, no, it's lesser in fatality rate and uh, infectivity compared to your Ebola. All right, but it, it causes the same disease. All right, so that's for Philo VDD. Again, what you have to remember, filamentous, naku ka na palang, filamentous, fila, filo. Ayan, filamentous, filo VDD, wag na mag-isip. Okay, all right, so that's for your Philo VDD. Again, Marburg, Shepherd's crook appearance. So here's the picture, diba? So you can see ang Ebola. Filamentos, no? Thread-like siya. Ah, excuse me. And Marburg, wala na klaro din, pero na siya yung shepherd's crook ko sa hay. Alright, kanin, shepherd's crook appearance. Okay? Alright, so that's for the Philo Viride. Oh my gosh. Okay, ayan. The most pathogenic among all the hemorrhagic fever viruses. Alright, so it can be deadly. It's really deadly. Okay, all right, ayan, sige. Next, we go now to the Flavi Viridae, ayan. Flavi Viridae, nasa pangalan na Flavi because it came from the Latin word Flavus, meaning yellow. All right. Now, your Flavi Viridae is another family of viruses in which a lot of arbo viruses can be found. So, take note, kinsa itong first family, the Bunia Viridae, okay? Second is your Flavi Viridae. Daghan, yung kayong arbo virus, and if not majority, yung kay arbo virus or mga arthropod-born na viruses. So Flavi Viridae, again, these are single-stranded RNA genome uh, surrounded by spherical and icosahedral capsid with an envelope. So na siya envelope. For the viruses, kinsa na sila, again, the Arbo viruses na pinaka-common good. You have the encephalitis group, Japan. Uh, you have the yellow fever, of course, dengue, nako, very common endemic in the Philippines, West Nile virus, and the encephalitis viruses, uh, such as your Japanese encephalitis, you have the St. Louis encephalitis, Powassan encephalitis virus, and of course, also the Zika virus. As ang another family or another member of the virus uh, or Flavi Viridae is your hepatitis C virus. But your hepatitis C virus is again, it's not an arthropod born virus. All right. So for the Flavi Viridae, again, so we'll start first with the transmission. Of course, these arboviruses, nasa pangalan na, they are transmitted. They are transmitted through an arthropod uh, or a vector. And usually the vector is a mosquito. Ayan. So mosquitoes, good, usually, ang iyahang vector. Okay. All right. So vector is always and usually a mosquito. All right. So always and usually a mosquito. All right. But except, except for Zika virus. Your Zika virus, um, although it is... Um, Although it is a, I <laughs> the Zika virus, although it can be transmitted also through mosquitoes, no, or through uh, arthropod-borne vectors, it can also, or it can, oh, aside sa pwede siya ma-transmit through vectors, ang Zika virus, it can also be transmitted through infected blood or even sexual contact. Yes, take note of that. All right. Uh, okay. West Nile virus also can be transmitted through blood transfusion, tissue transplantation, and also human breast milk. So, um, daghan pang other ways, pero the main good and the most common way for these viruses to be transmitted, it's through an arthropod vector. Okay. All right. Ayan, sige. That's for uh, your uh, mode of transmission. Now, for the disease, of course, uh, encephalitis virus. Uh, you have Japanese encephalitis, St. Louis encephalitis, and the Powassan encephalitis, of course, they call infections, a brain, all right? And your Japanese encephalitis is considered to be the major cause of encephalitis in Asia and the most common cause of arboviral encephalitis in the world. So take note, if ang question kay most common viral encephalitis, okay, the answer is, on man, HSV, herpes simplex virus, usually HSV1. Pero if ang question kay most common arboviral encephalitis, meaning encephalitis caused by an arthropod-born virus, ang sama answer, your Japanese encephalitis. All right. So, um, true enough, I think there have, na ako'y nabasahan na post sa una sa Facebook yun. Uh, katong couple sila, and then, 
uh, like, nagbakasyon sila sa Palawan, and then, uh, sa El Nido, I think, or sa Coron ba to something. But sa Palawan, and then after pila ka days, kay iyahang boyfriend, kay nag-develop o nagkasakit o intense. And then, na hospital gud siya. Um, and the doctors didn't know kung unsa iyahang sakit, pero it involved the brain daw. And um, after a while, parang, pagkamatay sa 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 boyfriend namatay ang boyfriend ang diagnosis was encephalitis na viral ang origin i forgot if it's japanese encephalitis by lahang diagnosis or the other encephalitis such as western equine or eastern equine encephalitis but i feel like japanese encephalitis to siya because again japanese encephalitis is a major cause of encephalitis in asia so ayun so be careful no because we have the vector we have the mosquitoes no possible pod na we have or we, the encephalitis can happen all right okay now kayo sana ng mga viruses usually mga good dears no they are in uh they are contained no or ilang mga reservoir hosts are usually mga animals no such as monkeys such as mga birds no or other mga mammals now once the mosquitoes bite no the the host, the vertebrate host, such as mga birds or mga monkeys, of course, may infect ang mosquito. And once these mosquitoes are able to bite humans, dito nila ma-spread ang virus. Alright? So, depende po siya sa mosquito if it's the type of mosquito na maka-bite ba o both animal and humans. But usually, it's the animal good that harbors the virus. The virus will persist in high concentration in the blood, usually in animals. No? So, ang animals gud ang mag-exhibit og viremia meaning daghan kaayo and humans kita usually we are dead end hosts meaning pag na-infect sa virus dili na takahatag sa virus sa animals or sa uh, dili na takahatag sa virus balik sa animals because again we are dead end host usually sa mga arboviruses all right pero nayo bang mga uh, viruses arboviruses na dili ta dead end so pwede dapo na to mahatag balik sa animal so ina ang life cycle nila all right so again that's for your encephalitis viruses iyahang yeah, symptom is of course fever, headache, decreased consciousness. For St. Louis encephalitis, still the same, meningo encephalitis, and most infections usually occur in the summer months. Because again, during this time, mas daghang uh, mosquitoes, no? In terms of breeding sa imuhang mga vectors, mas daghan sila ani na time. Alright, next you have the West Nile virus, uh, bird mosquito cycle, meaning ang bird ang nag-harbor, yun, so West Nile virus. And usually the birds are kato mga urban na mga birds, pag yun, such as mga crows, no? Mga crows, uh, mga inana, na sila dito nag-reside nag ang virus. So again, uh, 20% will develop the West Nile fever and this fever, uh, this consists of headache, fatigue, um, swollen lymph glands, and may also involve the brain, uh, meningitis or encephalitis. And of course, uh, another one is your yellow fever. Your yellow fever virus, again, uh, is an arthropod-borne virus and it's, it, it is um, transmitted by the same mosquito that transmits dengue. All right? So, Aedes aegypti. So, mo vector sa imuhang yellow fever. Your yellow, yeah, your yellow fever virus was discovered by, I think you're all familiar with this na, it was discovered by Dr. Walter Reed. Ayan, Walter Reed. Igso ni James Reed. Chaka, chaka okay, all right. So, yellow fever virus, na preso buzzer na, it was discovered by Dr. Walter Reed. Ayan. R-E-E-D. Ayan. Dr. Walter Reed. Siya ang nakadiscover sa yellow fever virus. Because during sa time mga 1900s sa Panama Canal, daghang mga... Um, daghang mga workers na namatay and na infect po o disease. And it was unknown, no? And si Dr. Walter Reed was an army physician during that time, itong napita, and then siya ang nakadiscover sa virus, alright? So it's called yellow fever because the patient exhibits jaundice, okay? So therefore, yellow, yellow fever, ayan. Because again, the virus infects your liver. Ang yang ganahan kay yang liver, okay? Now, aside from that, it may also have, um, the patient may exhibit anorexia, nausea, and also a toxic phase again in which the patient develops jaundice, bleeding from the mouth, eyes, nose, stomach, and other areas. And this may be uh, fatal because kidneys may fail. All right? Ayan. So that's for um, the yellow fever disease uh, caused by yellow fever virus. Again, transmitted by the same mosquito that transmits dengue. All right. Okay. Now for your disease, pa next. 
natin as sa next. Of course, the dengue fever. You're all familiar with this. Um, I don't know if you've experienced the dengue, but I've experienced the dengue. And very kapwe good siya, no? <laughs> so, your dengue can come in two forms. Number one is ang primary infection ni mo, which is known as your dengue fever, or also known as your break bone fever. And another is your dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome, DSS. Dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Now, in your first infection with dengue fever, it's actually quite mild lang, no? Um, uh, break bone fever, good, because na joint pain. So, mura ka, as in, kapwe mong lawas, no? Sakit mong joints and mga muscles. Um, and this usually self-limiting lang, and uh, the disease may may end or may last for about six to seven days. But again, it can still be deadly kung dili mo siya agapan. However, in your second dengue, if, no? If the serotype that infects you this time is the is a different serotype from your initial infection, then dira na ka og dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Your dengue virus has four, no, four ka serotypes. So one, two, three, four. Now, if example, limuhang primary infection kay serotype one, pagka second mo na infection kay serotype two, ayan, dito na siya mag cause og dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Why? Because pag second infection ni mo, your body has already antibodies against the first serotype, okay? But pag, pag reinfect mo, that's a new virus. Pero the body will still produce this um, antibody, okay? And this antibody will elicit, alright? Or ma ang mahita po, kayo mo ang immune system, magkaroon o parang mo overreact, no? Magkaroon ng cytokine or cytokine storm, okay? And what happens is magproduce o dalhang cytokines or inflammatory reactions. What happens, it can lead to um, weakening or rupture of the vasculature, okay? Ma rupture mo mga blood vessels which can lead to fluid leakage and then resulting to shock. And also, it can also lead to bleeding internally. That's why it can be deadly because of the non-neutralizing antibody that was already produced by the primary infection. Pag second infection mo with another serotype, lahi man siya na serotype, so walay antibody ang imuhang lawas. Pero your body will still produce the antibody kay the body thinks that it's still dengue, all right? So what happens is pag produce niya, all right, it promotes, okay, um, the, it promotes the production of a lot of cytokines, which can lead to cytokine storm and intense inflammatory reactions, which can lead to the rupture of your vasculature and leakage also of your fluid, which can lead to shock, all right? So that's why must must carry a second infection of a different serotype, okay? Because again, it can cause dengue hemorrhagic fever, or dengue shock syndrome. So that's for dengue, okay? And dengue is considered to be the most prevalent, okay? The most common arbovirus in the world. So shagyun. True enough, the country kayong endemic countries ang dengue. All right? So dengue virus, the most prevalent, the most common arbovirus in the world. Okay, all right. And the last is, of course, your Zika virus. Your Zika virus is, again, transmitted by, I think, Aedes Japon. Your Zika virus has the same symptoms with um, dengue and also chikungunya. So, magsakit imong lawas, no? magsakit imong uh, body, kapuyon ka, fever, and all that. But the main... Um, unique or very important characteristic lang to take note of Zika is its ability to cross the placenta and can cause uh, high drops fetalis and can cause mga congenital defects, especially microcephaly. So, para siya sa CMV, katong gamay ang ulo sa bata, no? Microcephaly. So, it can be transmitted through the placenta, all right, sa sa buros na mother, alright? Aside from that, it can also cause Guillain-Barre syndrome. So, it, it can cause your Guillain-Barre syndrome. Again, Guillain-Barre syndrome, it's an autoimmune disease uh, that destroys your peripheral nerves, alright? So, ascending paralysis. Ayan. So, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Kinsa ganitong bacteria po na associated with Guillain-Barre syndrome, one of the important sequelae of this bacteria is your Guillain-Barre syndrome. Nako, dapat na-answer na to if naglantaw mo. Your... Campylobacter jejuni or jejuni. All right. Sana naman. Okay. Ayan. Sige. So that's for the diseases caused by your uh, arboviruses of the Flaviviridae. Again, for diagnosis, your West Nile virus, IgM, IgG, ELISA. Again, uh, because again, they can cause encephalitis. So you detect IgM in CSF. And the presence of IgM antibodies to these viruses in your CSF is diagnostic of this infection. Of course, you can also use RT-PCR. All right. Now, yellow fever, of course, ELISA, um, RT-PCR, Gapon, and a vaccine is also available. All right. So, um, pila na ka years actually na na siya po nag... Um, um, nag ah, all right, sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so again, um, your um, 
Your yellow fever virus, uh, your yellow fever vaccine, of course, again, 80 years na since it was discovered, and sige kung siyang ginagamit karon. It uses the 17D, no? 17D strain. 17D. 17D strain. Marag jeep sa, ano, no? Marag jeep sa Cebu. Padulong ni siya kay Hala. Charot. <laughs> your 17D. Padulong sa Sugbo Mercado. Charot. Check lang. So, Sir Mark, how do you know that? Of course. Palagi kami doon. Charot. Check lang. Okay, again. 17D strain of your... um. Yellow fever virus. Muto siya sulod sa imuhang vaccine. So it's a live attenuated. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Live, I think. Or attenuated vaccine. I could be wrong, ha? Pero 17D strain of your yellow fever virus. 17D. Okay. And the vaccine is administered intradermally. Okay. Sa imuhang skin. All right. Okay. So that's for uh, the arboviruses. Okay. Next is your, of course, um, dengue. Of course, we diagnose that through serology. Usually through routine laboratories, we diagnose dengue uh, using serology and also hematological no, results and other um, uh, results in the laboratory. And of course, clinical presentation of the patient. All right. Um, for serology, I hope na discuss po siya, pero I mentioned this akong IS last sem. Um, the dengue serology, katong dengue duo, no, detecting antibodies to dengue, IgG and IgM, and also the NS1 antigen. Okay, take note of that. Kaya sa inyong internship, common kayang dengue duo, promise. Okay, <laughs> kaya of course, what is, dengue is everywhere, especially here in the Philippines, and we have the dengue season, some of the rainy season, di ba? So, dengue duo, uh, dengue duo siya because you're detecting both antibody and antigen at the same, at the same time, no? Uh, IgG, IgM for dengue, and IgM, and also the NS1 antigen, as in NS number one, okay? NS means non-structural, non-structural. So this is a non-structural protein antigen produced by your dengue virus usually through, uh, usually during active infection. So NS1 antigen and the antibodies to dengue. And this is the component of your dengue duo na test, all right? Common yung kayo sa mga hospitals, promise. I'm sure may encounter na ninyo sa inyong internship sa hospital po hon. Alright? IgG, IgM, and also NS1 antigen or the non-structural protein na antigen. Alright, okay. So that's for your arbovirus, arboviruses in the Flaviviridae family. And of course, the last virus under your Flaviviridae, it's your hepatitis C. So daghan ang mga hepatitis no, na mga viruses na na-discuss. Usually in your books, uh, like sa Mayhon, Bailey, Murray, usa ka chapter ang hepatitis viruses. Pero kani ako ra siyang gi-distribute silang family. Okay, ayan. Para naman kay scary po nang wala kay family, no. Very sad naman din charot. So for for HCV, it is under the family Flavi Viridae. No, take note on si how mode of transmission, same with EBV, uh, with HBV, sorry, hepatitis B, same sila, exposure to infected blood. So majority gyud ng HCV gyud sa dears, ang HCV gyud is through blood, especially through blood transfusions, especially contaminated blood products. No, So, blood products contaminated with HCV dira yun ang source of infection. All right? It can also be through um, drug use, no, IV drug use, sharing of razors, and etc. So, of course, uh, similar with HBV, you may have acute hepatitis na pwedeng mo resolve, meaning pwede kang maayo, but there could also be chronicity. Pwede siyang mo prolong or mo persist for a long period of time, which is chronic infection. And if nagay ni chronic infection sa hepatitis, it will result in hepatocellular carcinoma in the long run or end-stage liver disease. So take note, kinsa na ito mga, mga makakos o hepatocellular carcinoma, HBV, HCV. So sila yun na mga chronic infections. And usually sa chronic infections, good makakos yung mga cancer. Of course, kay long time, good siya, long term. no. So chronic infections of these viruses will cause hepatis, hepatocellular carcinoma. Alright. Now for diagnosis of HCV, again, it's through antibody tests. Serology, good usually. And detecting anti-HCV, EIA. And of course, RT-PCR. You can also use quantitative branch DNA assay to quantify the virus in your blood. And again, if ang question kay HCV RNA, unsa itong detect Viral load. Alright? Or, or unsa ginadetect sa viral load for HCV? HCV RNA. Take note of that. Basta HCV RNA, viral load. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So that's for the Flavi Viridae. Alright. So here's the virus, your dengue, and then you also have the yellow fever virus. Mara siya soccer, no? Mara soccer ball. Anyway. And then this is the table of the summary of your Flaviviruses, no? So again, as you can see, dengue, 80s, yellow fever, 80s, 
Japanese encephalitis, usually mga Culex, okay? And the Russian spring, summer encephalitis, and Puwasan are mga ticks, all right? Now, again, kinsailahang hosts, as you can see, birds ang West Nile, humans ang, ang yellow fever and also dengue, possible po ng monkeys, all right? And again, uh, for disease, kinsa to mga cause of encephalitis, nasa pangalan na sa virus, all right? And Zika, dengue, yellow fever, pwede siyang uh, systemic ang ang imuhang infection. All right? So take note as I've mentioned usually these flaviviruses there's ilahang hosts in the environment or animals. So such as monkeys, pwede pod other humans, but majority gyud kay mga animals. Okay? All right, ayan. So that's for the flaviviruses, mga arboviruses. Okay. All right. This is the again uh the virus of HCV and this is uh the life cycle of the different arboviruses. So kaning uh, WEEV, WEE, <laughs> iba ni siya na virus, lain siya na family. So we'll focus here. Your St. Louis and West Nile encephalitis, again, ilahang uh, reservoir hosts are the birds. And the mosquito is Culex, and as you can see, double arrow, meaning daily end stage host imuhang human. So pwede pang matransmit sa humans, balik ang virus to the mosquito. All right? So same with dengue yellow fever, usually monkeys, kung sa jungle, jungle na life cycle. Kung urban life cycle, pwedeng human Months lang gadala. Okay. And uh, for Russian spring summer, usually kay mga sheep, rodents, all right? And the vector is your exodes. Uh, but kanisala na encephalitis, pwede po makuha sa humans through milk, okay? Of the goat or mga sheep, okay? All right. So that's for the life cycle. Again, as I've mentioned, in the environment, usually animals good ang reservoir hosts nila. So same with coronavirus and other viruses good. All right. So that's for the flabby very day. Um, disease mechanisms of your flabby viruses, ato lang i-focus, kay lahi na, families, lahi na family si Toga virus. So dengue again, flu-like, systemic. It can also lead to hepatitis and hemorrhage uh, and also shock. Yellow fever, same presentation with dengue. Your Zika, again, flu-like. Uh, flu-like rasha usually, pero di siya mukos og severe uh, disease such as shock, no? Pero again, it can cause microcephaly and fetus, mga congenital defects. St. Louis encephalitis, West Nile encephalitis, and Japanese encephalitis, these are all flu-like and then encephalitis po. So, mo start sa sila as flu-like, no? Mag fever ka, headache, and then mo progress to encephalitis. Your chikungunya, your eastern equine encephalitis are all under toga Viridae na family. So, lahis lang na family. But still an arbovirus. Alright? Ayan. Sige. That's for the mechanisms of your flabby viruses. Alright. Now, we go na to the next family, your orthomixo viridae. Ayan. So, orthomixo viridae, ang sikat yun. <laughs> Pinakasikat uh, na component of, uh, or the, the family members of this family of viruses is, of course, your influenza viruses. Your influenza viruses that infect humans usually na four, no? Actually, o four na sila kabuk. A, B, C, and D. A, B, C ra kung gibutang dira. <laughs> Alright? Pero na yung D dears. Alright? Now, very important characteristic dears sa orthomixo and even paramixo is that sa ilahang outer surface, sa ilahang virus, they have what we call uh, envelope, nasa yung mga spike proteins known as your heme agglutinin and your neura Minidase. All right. So you have hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Actually, ang hemagglutinin, murag na na siya 18 kabuok uh, na serotypes or na mga types. And ang neuraminidase na siya 11. Okay? So, medyo dili na-updated. But anyway, it, these uh, proteins function again for attachment. For hemagglutinin, it's for attachment or to bind host cells. And for neuraminidase, it's used to cleave budding uh, viruses from infected cells. Meaning, this is used para mugawas or para mubad imuhang new virions after replication from the host cell. Alright? Now, the different types of influenza, nag-differ sila in terms of their antigenic and genetic makeup of their matrix protein and nucleoprotein. Alright? So, take note of these dear sa hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Alright? Now, characteristic, again, pleomorphic, spherical, segmented. Take note. So, ilahang genome, segmented. Meaning, na asay, different segments, no? Eight kabuok usually. Eight separate molecules. Single-stranded, helical capsid, and na japon siya'y envelope. Alright. So again, three major types. Influenza A, B, and C. Na pa yung letter D. Alright? But majority kay tulo lang. And types A and B usually yung makakos o human disease. And influenza, among all the respiratory viruses, siya yun ang nakakos o daghang illness. Okay? Siya yun ang nakakos sa greatest number of serious acute illnesses among all the respiratory viruses that are there, shagyud ang nakakos o disease na daghan. Alright? Okay. Now, we go to the different viruses. Of course, you have A, B, and C. Let's go to B and C muna. Your influenza B and C are actually the more 
less severe no and the more pabebe na mga type of influenza usually they don't cause intense uh, diseases uh, in your um, humans ang influenza b usually a milder form no of the influenza but it can also cause seasonal flu ragyapon seasonal influenza in the world now your b and c very important because uh, especially your influenza b your influenza b only exhibits antigenic drift okay so na mention natin ang antigenic drift sa start uh, it only exhibits antigenic drift meaning every year or from time to time you nag you ginagmay na changes sa yahang h and a na mga spike proteins and also um, yahang components pero these are changes that are these are changes that are very minimal in short gagmay na changes pero Shara gyapon na. No, dili gyap. Wala nag change yahang identity. It's still the same, pero nare ginagmay na mga changes. Ayan. So, parang ano gyapon. Prehas sa imuhang mga ex na nagingo na nagbago na sila, pero mura day japon ganun. Okay, ayan. Charo. So, nag start na sila bago for mga mga five days after ni ingon sila na magbago na sila. And then after five days, ni balik na sila sa lahang old ways. Ganun. Ganyan. That's antigenic drift. Okay, ayan. So, this is exhibited by your influenza B. Antigenic drift lagi dang naan niya. Alright? Now, your specimens of choice are, of course, nasopharyngeal swab, um, washes, and also aspirates. For cell culture, it can grow um, in PMK, MDCK, and embryonated chicken eggs. Remember, influenza grows best at embryonated chicken eggs. Okay. And of course, uh, it's confirmed through heme adsorption and heme agglutination. Because again, they have the heme agglutinin na protein. Diba? We have discussed that already. Heme adsorption. Sa cell culture, butangan ni mo siya o um, guinea pig na RBCs. And then if the cell... Uh, in the, if the infected cells in muhang cell culture na ay, um, example, influenza, mutapot ang RBCs dito sa mga cells kung asa na atong influenza because of the hemagglutinin. And for hemagglutination, of course, kuakag fluid from cell culture that may contain the virus and pag add ni mo og suspension sa RBC, mag-agglutinate sila because of, again, still hemagglutinin. Alright? That's hemagsorption and hemagglutination. So we perform that after cell culture talaga para ma-confirm. Because most of the time, your influenza viruses do not produce CPE, no? Or Certified Public Accounts and chara chara lang. So again, <laughs> Dili kaysa mo produce ng CP. That's why we need to confirm through other methods such as your FA, no fluorescent antibody, or your heme adsorption, heme agglutination test. Okay, all right. Now again, very important lang for influenza B. Usually milder versions lang, no. Um, and it, but it can still cause seasonal flu. So that's for influenza B. For influenza C, mild Japon na disease. Uh, pero testing is not routinely requested. All right, because again, medyo delicate siya. Komo na mo cause of disease. All right, so that's for B and C. Now we go now to A. Ayan, influenza A, the star ng Pasko. Charot. So among all the influenza viruses, shagyud ang makakoso ng intense na mga diseases. Because your influenza A, it can infect both humans and even animals. It can spread to humans by aerosols even from animals, and in the feces of domestic and wild. Excuse me. Huh? Waterfall. Excuse me, sorry. Okay, alright. You can kuna ni hapon. Charot ayan. Now, for influenza A, siya yun ang majority na nag-cause infection. Alright? And siya po ang major influenza yun virus that causes a lot or that caused a lot of pandemic. Siya yun, no? Si si influenza A, siya nag yun. Siya ang nag-cause sa tanang mga pandemics uh, that is attributed to the influenza virus. Alright. So, um, again, every season, nag yun, or every year, nagyoy flu season, no? So, common na siya in the temperate region, sa mga cold regions, sa ilaha dito kay mga late fall to early spring. Sa ato adiri, murag mga about summer, I think mga summer dapita. So, during this time, daghan sila, no? Daghan sila, mas prevalent sila, mas easy sila mo spread sa environment or to humans, okay? Now, um, again, take note, your influenza A, siya yun ang nakos sa mga pandemics. So how do these, how are these viruses transmitted? Again, airborne. No, small airborne droplets uh, expelled during talking, breathing, and of course, coughing. So even breathing, na ay gagmay na droplets, pwede na mo spread ang influenza. Now, people, again, are most contagious after, uh, in the first three to four days of illness. Ayan, alright. Now, influenza, on say ang disease, prodrome of malaise, and then followed by headache, followed by uh, high fever, chill, sore throat, uh, uh, stuffy or rough runny nose and of course cough 
In young children, it may resemble other respiratory tract diseases. It may also cause pneumonia, but majority is ihang ginapromote ang secondary bacterial pneumonia caused by S. pneumoniae, H. influenzae, and Staphylococcus aureus. So more on promotion siya of secondary bacterial pneumonia. All right. Now, inflammatory responses um, initiated by influenza may also cause mga severe symptoms such as myocarditis and myositis. Encephalopathy, post-influenza encephalitis, it can also cause encephalitis, multi-organ failure, and Ray or Ray syndrome. So, na liver failure, no? hepatic coma, na may tabo. And na po ito yung ano, reports of Guillain-Barre syndrome association, all right, with your influenza viruses. All right. Now, for influenza A, ano siyang schedule ang nag-cause sa mga pandemic? It be it's because, aside from exhibiting antigenic drift, which as we have mentioned, kato na mga ginagmay na changes, pero siya ragyo na, all right, it exhibits antigenic shift, okay? And the antigenic shift, di ba, sa start pa lang, siya yun ang major-major na change yun in the appearance. So, kato na yun siyang example, nagpapayat ka, di ba? Uh, like, you're very medyo oversized or plus weight uh, task ka, dako ka weight sa una, and then nagpapayat ka. It's a major, no? Total uh, change in your outfit. Major glow up, parang ganun, or major change yun. That is your antigenic shift. Meaning, nag changes in the genome, in their, uh, imuhang changes put in the uh, hemagglutinin and uraminidase na spike protein to the to the point na bago nagyun siya na virus, bago nagyun siya na strain. That's why siya ang makakos sa a lot of epidemics and pandemics. Because um, because of this new strain, the population is not yet immunized to this new strain. So therefore, pwede siya mo infect with a lot of people. Alright? Kay the, the, the population is already used to the old strain and then here comes another new strain because of antigenic shift. So the patient, the population is not prepared. No? It's not immunized against the new strain. That's why possible siyang mukosog epidemics. And true enough, your influenza A yun ang nag-cause sa tanang pandemics <laughs> uh, that is attributed to your influenza virus. All right. Now, for your uh, sim uh, for diagnosis, again, uh, best specimen similar with your uh, influenza B, nasopharyngeal swab washes and aspirates. For cell culture, still the same. Heme absorption, hemagglutination can also be performed because these viruses uh, are sometimes do not produce your CPE. Viral subtypes, again, are based on the hemagglutinin and uraminidase. No? That's why uh, later when we go to uh, the different uh, strains of influenza A that caused, the, caused pandemics, ilahangalan kay based on the H and N na mga proteins, mga subtypes. So, di ba? Of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with mga AHN, AH1N1, AH5N1, di ba? Because of uh, the different no subtypes sa yahang hemagglutinin and uraminidase na spike protein. And as I mentioned again, your influenza A, both antigenic shift and antigenic drift. Okay. All right. Now, unsa din mahitabo, ang ano din na antigenic shift? Usually, your influenza A man good, majority man good. The influenza A, what happens is there's a reassortment of their genes. What happen? What happens is, um, example, human influenza, avian influenza, mag combine sila together, all right, or mag reassortment sila together in another host, and that is the production of a new strain. And usually, the intermediate host, kung, kung asam hay tabo ng reassortment is sa mga pigs, sa mga swine, because your pigs have receptors for both human influenza viruses and bird influenza viruses. That's why sa pig ang intermediate host. Kaya dito, mag, dito sila mag-mix-mix ba? Maras talaga ga trial and error. Maras talaga mix gani. Ayan. So reassortment. No? So example, human influenza, ayan, na-expose na ang pig. And bird influenza, na-expose po ang pig. And then napag yung influenza po mismo ang pig. So mag-reassortment ang tulo, ayan. So sadya. No? <laughs> Nag-produce talaga bagong strain. And that is now your antigenic shift. Okay? A new strain which now caused the pandemic. Alright? So there's reassortment of the genes, no? Or different types of influenza from different species. Okay. Alright. So that's for the introduction. Daming chika. Alright. Anyway, so that's for the structure of influenza virus. As you can see, the different spike proteins, you have the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. No? Look at the color. So ano na siya? 3D ano dears? <laughs> 3D um uh, 3D uh, visualization of your um, um, okay. Uh, 3D visualization of your um, virus, no. And of course, these are the 
viruses, influenza viruses that can exhibit or that cause seasonal influenza. Of course, you have influenza A and you have influenza B. All right. So silang duha yun ang makakos o mga seasonal flu. No, every year nagyo flu season. Ayan. And your subtypes for influenza A, of course, you have the H one N one and H five N two. Ah, tama. H3, did I? Sorry. H3 and 2. Silang duhag yun ang major subtypes that cause seasonal flu. And for influenza B, it's called lineage. You have the B Victoria and B Yamagata. And after mga subtypes and lineages, you have the clades, which are groups. And then napadyo yung subclades or subgroups. So ina na siya ka-intense. No? Ina na siya ka-complex. Ka right? So na siya mga subgroups and mga subcategories. Right? Pero ang main subtypes or main strains good of A is your AH1N1 and AH3N2. And for your influenza B, you have the Yamagata and Victoria lineage. All right. Okay. Now we're going to kaning history no of the influenza A pandemics no that's why ilahang mga ngalan di ba AH1 N1 AH2 N2 it's because letter A stands for influenza A and then H1 N1 muni siya ang mga different types of your uh, hemagglutinin and uraminidase usually H1 H2 H3 ang um, makakos gyud og infection uh, sa imong mga um uh, ansani <laughs> sa imong influenza and for N, usually N1 and N2 po ang involved. Okay? Alright. So as you can see, the first uh, pandemic yun, which is the deadliest po and the largest uh, flu pandemic is of course the Spanish influenza, which is uh, which happened in 1918 uh, and it caused or it um, yeah, it took about 25 to 50 million deaths worldwide no, uh, in the world at that time, 1918, Spanish flu. And that is a novel um, influenza virus, and that is your AH1N1. So it's from the bird, and then it transfers it to human, so the assortment uh, happened, and then of course, it becomes the new novel strain, which is your AH1N1. All right. Next, ang next na po na pandemic sa influenza is the Asian influenza in 1957, which is caused by your H2N2. So what happens is, ang H1N1, na human virus, nag-reassort or nag-mix siya with your H2N2 avian virus, which then produce the reassortment or reassorted <laughs> na influenza virus from the bird and humans, and that is your H2N2. Diba? Very, ano sila, no? Very interesting yun. Okay? Pwede sila mag-mix o mga genomes. Pag-mix na genomes pa, dito sila mo cause o <laughs> pandemic. Sana naka-intense. Okay. All right. After that, you have the Hong Kong influenza, which is your H3N2. So, H3, gikan gapon siya sa avian virus, and the H2N2 na na produce ani ni mix sa H3 avian virus producing the H3 N2 new strain uh, which is now the Hong Kong influenza so gikan siya sa birds and then the pinaka recent was in 2009 which is your swine flu gikan siya sa pig because your pig okay dito na hitabo ang reassortment so human influenza na H3N2 plus avian influenza and then swine flu or or pig influenza na H1N1 nagmix la together mix 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 and then boom producing again uh, the H1N1 same siya with your Spanish influenza pero na ray difference gamay and this caused the 2009 um, swine flu na influenza all right so inana siya so throughout the years pag Japan, because of our practices and all that pwede ra gyud Japan mahitabo na podog another strain of virus no or of influenza so kailangan jud siyang uh, tingnan ng mabuti okay ayan kailangan siyang paghandaan okay so that's for the different um, strains of your influenza A that cause a lot of pandemics in the world Ayan. So, ito nga, nasa table na. So, atong 1918 is H1N1. 1947, still the H1N1. 1957 is your H2N2, which is the Asian flu strain. 1968, the Hong Kong flu strain. 1977 is the H1N1 ulit. Gikan siya sa Russia. 1987 to 2003 is the H5N1, which is your avian flu. So, gikan siya sa birds. And then, of course, ang pinaka-recent is 2009, which is your H1N1. And then, naputo yung pinaka-recent h 7 N9, if I'm not mistaken, or H7N1, um, gikan siya sa chicken. Okay, so sa, gikan siya po siya sa China. Alright, actually, uh, gimension siya sa Murray na China yun ang parang haven, no? Or siya yun ang hot pot, uh, melting pot, no? Of a lot of these viruses. Because again, of their live markets, no? Dagan sila mga practices dito that involve live animals. Alright, so dito yun sila uh, usually magikan ang mga new strains of your uh, influenza and even other viruses. All right. So again, usually after producing the new strains such as H1N1, no, after mokoshag pandemic, 
murag mo mo mix na lang siya sa ato ang world no or mo mahimo na lang siyang normal na virus and it causes now seasonal flu na mga uh, disease so as we have mentioned diba H1N1 it's a flu virus that causes the seasonal flu diba so after mo cause pandemic it will now be integrated ayan into our viruses in the world and causes uh, and cause seasonal flu na ayan all right now diseases associated with influenza of course in adults fever malaise sore throat and productive cough for children similar to adults pero higher fever gastrointestinal tract symptoms and mga croup or croup and then of course complications pneumonia secondary bacterial pneumonia uh, neurologic syndromes guillain barre as mentioned and rye syndrome and may also involve encephalitis all right so that's for your influenza one of the most important viruses you that cause infection in the world. Okay. And the mga historical na mga pandemics in the world. Siya ginang nag-cause, Anna. All right. Okay. Next is your paramixo viridae. So, ayan. So, it's the opposite of your orthomixo. Paramixo. Because again, iyahang genome this time is non-segmented. Okay. So, non-segmented na yung genome compared to your orthomixo. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, uh, wala siya ay dili segmented iyahang genome. All right. And a very important characteristic is that it in it induces no fusion cell to cell fusion or syncytia in the cells that it infect okay so it can cause cell to cell fusion or syncytia multinucleated giant cells in the cells that it infect all right so starting first with the viruses kinsa man sila si mumps and si measles all right so measles virus or also known as your rubiola take note hakin sa ang measles kinsa ang german measles lahi na sila ang measles lang is your rubiola under the fami family para mixo Viridae, all right? And the genus Morbili virus. So for transmission of measles, again, it's very, very contagious. No, extremely contagious, transmitted through respiratory secretions. All right. So for measles, of course, rash, gapon siya. It causes rash, okay? And uh, it can cause um, high fever, gapon, uh, coryza, or mag mag seek mag rhinitis ka coryza and conjunctivitis also and it also may lead to pneumonia and encephalitis if severe cases especially the immunocompromised a typical measles these are a type of measles in which um nagkaroon ka ng measles after getting the older version of vaccine no uh dili siya ka to mga reset na vaccine so a typical measles again occurs in those with waning vaccine immunity because of old type of vaccine vaccine mo na kuha like dili na katong mga recent karon ayan um infections also the immunocompromised and malnourished especially the vitamin A deficient na mga children because your vitamin A deficient children they have a lower immune response um in terms of mga especially in the T cell immunity and T cell immunity is important in fighting against the measles all right and a very important sequelae or complication is your subacute sclerosing panencephalitis now take note of that dears subacute sclerosing panencephalitis meaning there's a defective measles virus na nasa imuhang imuhang brain all right and dito siya magmultiply all right and of course it causes damages uh, to the brain which can lead to coma and even death all right so that's for your measles virus very important your dears diba? um and another important thing is measles can also cause congenital infections no especially if pregnant ang woman all right that's why we need to um i sorry mali mali dili dai sorry <laughs> ang german measles dito sorry rubella dito sorry ang rubiola di ay uh, usually sa mga children nagipanganak na. <laughs> okay so na siya sa childhood exanthems or childhood na mga rashes okay all right so that's for your measles virus i remember sa una mga 2018 i think when i was a we when i was a unsani um um uh, unsani na ako sa galyares i think or nag review na ako, I think 2019 uh, there was an outbreak of measles um in Dumaguete and other parts in the country pod no primarily because again of vaccine hesitancy because your measles uh, the rest of usually kind of mga childhood diseases such as measles rubella no ma control mo gani because of vaccination unta but because of vaccine hesitancy daghan ng mga new babies or new children na walay vaccination or dili vaccinated against these viruses against these very preventable diseases so therefore ayan nagkakoso mga outbreaks pero na control ra man puto siya so thankfully can learn i think wala pa ko nagka i think mura complete man ako vaccination siguro uh, ma mahal mo ba, ba ako charot check la <laughs> i need to ask my mother charot la <laughs> okay all right now the measles again it causes the rash no maculopapular rash and this rash is believed to be a result of the immune t cells targeting 
uh, the measles infected epithelial cells. So that's why nakai rash, it's because of your immune response against the infected epithelial cells of your measles. All right, okay. And usually, if mag, uh, magka measles ka, you have lifelong immunity. And measles also is only found good in humans. It infects primarily humans. And one serotype pa siya, so very, pwede good siyang ma-eradicate. No? Pwede good siyang ma-eradicate. It's a candidate for eradication. Pero there are still a lot of factors to consider when it comes to that, in, uh, like vaccine hesitancy and all of that. So medyo matagal-tagal pa siguro. All right, okay. Ayan. So that's for your... Uh, measles virus. Okay. Next is, of course, your mumps. No, your mumps virus um, is again cause, causing mumps. No, your mumps again, uh, usually, ang yahang main presentation is parotitis or inflammation of the salivary gland, usually bilateral. No, uh, both of your salivary glands mudako. All right. So, again, uh, transmission is person to person contact, usually respiratory droplets. And remember, no, ko tong Brooklyn 99 episode. Ani. Anyway, funny ka ayo. All right. Anyway, anyway, okay, because of mumps. But again, it's through respiratory contact, no droplets. Now, for diseases, again, parotitis. Aside from that, there may also be inflammation of other glands, such as pancreas and the genital organs. So, therefore, medyo scary ang males na magka mumps because, again, it can affect. Your testes, no, your epididymis, your epididymis, or epididymis, okay, or epididymis, okay. But sa ma-infect mo hang testes, and it can cause orchitis or inflammation of the testes, which can lead to sterility, no, mabaog ka. So that's why it's very scary if magka mumps ang ang males. Kaya possible na ma-infect ang 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 testes. Ayan. So nato yung mga chika na. Sige, try ng if magka mumps ka, diba? Init imong diri, init po ni mo hang <laughs> ilalong, charot. Ganun, ganun daw. Wala po ko nakatry og mumps. Di po ganun makatry, charot. Ayan. But anyway, ayan. There's possibility daw of orchitis, which can lead to Sterility. All right. Okay. I before I forget also the mesos, pathognomonic sign, the ideas is your coplic spots. So your coplic spots again are lesions usually in the uh in the mouth, no, in the mucosa of your mouth, buccal cavity or buccal mucosa. All right. And usually white nasha or pudding reddish. Okay. And that's your coplic spots, pathognomonic, meaning really uh unique good na characteristics in muhang mesos infection. All right. Now for diagnosis, again, cell culture pa din. Heme adsorption and heme agglutination similar with your orthomixo viridae because again they have they still have the heme agglutinin and, and a protein and of course serology and RT PCR okay all right that's for your paramixo viridae and of course yeah na mentioned na to atong MMR okay your measles mumps rubella vaccine so three in one na siya, trivalent okay so this is a live attenuated vaccine so buhi siya na weakened version of the virus. So Mesos, it uses the substrain Schwartz or Muratin. Okay. For mumps, it's your Geril Lin strain. Rubella, it's RA273 na strain. So vaccination, dapat after 12 months of age and 4 to 6 years or before junior high school. So efficiency, 95% lifelong immunization with a single dose. So imagine, no? Three diseases in one uh, vaccine. Na. So um, it's... Uh, it's disheartening, no? It's sad. Saddening po to know na daghan niya pong dili magpa-vaccine because of mga fake news, no? And all that. So again, as Metax, it's our job good to educate. Og makaya pag yun ma-educate. Can I uban na dili magpa-educate? Okay? Pero usik mang good ang chance, no? To be vaccinated and to be free and to be prevented, to be protected from these diseases, no? So if now may mga family good na mga anti-vaccine na hinay good na og chika. All right? So it's your job as a med tech. Okay. All right. Ayan. Mga challenges. Charot. Now for measles virus infection, again, disorder niya. A typical measles, as we have mentioned, no? More intense rash usually. Um, for post measles encephalitis, it can cost, it can lead to or it can involve the brain and subacute sclerosing panencephalitis CNS manifestations. There are defective measles virus in your um, brain or na mga measles virus in your brain uh, nagpadayon siya punchag multiply and then damages or damaging the brain. All right, so subacute lang subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. All right, okay, ayan. Next of the viruses under paramixo is of course the para influenza. Viruses. So, para influenza, para siyang influenza na viruses. So, as you can see, I four ka types usually. Um, and iyahang symptoms usually is similar with influenza. So, it causes respiratory uh, diseases. All right. So, mode of transmission is still person to person contact 
through respiratory uh, droplets. All right. Okay. Now, very important disease lang, dears, is the croup. All right? Or croup. Yeah. Your croup is subglotal swelling. Mag-swell diri sa imong epiglotis. And what happens is, uh, mo-close imong airway. It can lead to hoarseness imong tingog, no? Magpaos. And murakag seal bark. So, murakag karang tingog sa seal, no? Sa sea lion. Ganun. And it can lead to tachypnea, maglisod ka ginhawa, and tachycardia. Croup. Usually seen in children. And your croup is usually caused by the type 1 para influenza viruses. All right. Now, other diseases, of course, cold-like upper respiratory tract infection. For adults, it may, it may uh, cause pneumonia. And for children, bronchiolitis. It may infect your bronchioles. All right. Okay. All right. Your PIV3, your parainfluenza 3 virus, usually ang nag-cause sa bronchiolitis and pneumonia uh, sa imuha mga infants. And ang PIV4, um, usually ang um, mag-cause rog mild na mga symptoms, upper respiratory tract infections. All right. Okay. Now, in children, usually, ang um, para influenza 3, no, ang PIV3 usually ang makakos o severe na mga fatalities and mga diseases. All right? Now, for diagnosis, still the same RT-PCR, cell culture, uh, fluorescent antibody stain, heme adsorption, heme agglutination. All right. And next is, of course, your RSV, your respiratory syncytial virus. Still the same transmission is person to person through contact, uh, respiratory contact, secretions, pwede pong hand, no? Uh, mga walay proper hygiene, yes, hand hygiene. Your, your RSV is considered to be the most common cause of fatal acute respiratory tract infection in infants and young children, uh, which occurs usually in winter, all right? Because sa infants, yung ginakos is bronchiolitis, all right? Mag-inflame sa bronchios. What happens is maghubag yung bronchios na air trapping. Maglilis sulog ginahawa ang baby, all right? But usually, it's self-limiting, pero medyo scary siya lang taon sa imuhang baby na mag-apas o ginahawa. I think I've read, I, I saw a video about this. Nanay baby na, na inidalaw niya, uh, na murag uncle or family friends sa yung parents. And then, gihalokan ang baby, no? Um, because of course, baby, di ba, ganang matang mga halokong baby and other people. Charot, saka lang. So, di ba, basta baby, cute, di ba? So, mag-kiss ka. But then, after pila ka days, kayo nag-exhibit siya, okay na ni, uh, flu-like symptoms, nagliso na siya ginhawa, to the point na naabot siya sa hospital. Yun. And uh, nagliso yun, nag-apas yung ginhawa ang baby. As in, kita ko sa video, I can remember this. And it was attributed to your RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. Because in adults, usually, your RSV, baka katong ni bisita sa baby wala sa niya ka exhibit og symptoms pero nana day shy RSV no yarang gidala then nabutang niya sa baby which is still no immature pa kayong immune system wala na kaya so mo to naglisod yun infant kito siya naglisod siya ginhawa as in like nag-apas siya sa ginhawa na ICU ang bata but again i think na naka-recover ra siya so thankfully ayan so very scary no so RSV so kamo dear so na may mga babies no um or mga younger na mga niece nephew mga babies pa lang it's best good na if na may kanang dili family member gani like or mga dili kayo kaila wala ka kabalo kung asa gikan it's best na yosag ipa kiss or ipa touch sa baby, alright, to prevent these mga diseases because it's very scary, no, and life threatening po siya. So it's not because of discrimination; it's more on protecting, no, our baby from that, no. Ayan. So luoy luoy ang baby. Alright. So that's for RS uh, V. Okay. Um, because again, the RSV causes cell injury um, in your bronchi or in the bronchioles, which can lead to a lot of debris na mahitabo. And this debris will cause a plug. It will plug the bronchioles, therefore, maglisod og uh, agi ang air. Okay. All right. Ayan. So, um, your RSV, again, uh, nasa pangalan na syncytial, yung characteristic CPE, na siya multinucleated giant cells, which are, again, your syncytia. Because your RSV has what we call an F protein or fusion protein. So, siya yung facilitate sa pag-fuse sa cells sa uh, sa RSV kung asa siya nag-infect. Okay, so cell culture, again, uh, HEP2, PMK, human deployed fetal cells. But again, it may be difficult to grow in culture. And medyo labile, imuhang uh, virus in transport. That's why medyo lisod siya culture. So, we look at other uh, methods such as your uh, EIA, FA stain, and of course, RT-PCR. CPE, again, cytopathologic effect, certified certified public accounts, eh? <laughs> is again, multinucleated giant cell or syncytia. All right, so that's for your RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. Again, causes, the most common cause of fatal, nako, fatal, acute respiratory tract infection among infants and younger 
children. So be careful ha sa, sa kamuna yung mga babies nila. Katong babies na baby ha, dito yung uban ninyo mga baby. Ew, chara, chaka lang. Okay na, mga gulang na na sila. Okay na, kaya na nila ng RSV. Chara, okay. Ayan. Sige, that's for your paramyxovirus. So again, this is your parainfluenza virus, the RSV and your syncytia. So kanina yung arrow, as you can see, nagkumpol-kumpol ang daghang cells. Together, they form a large multinucleated one cell. Ayan, together, that's your syncytia. Okay, alright. Ayan, si syncytia. Erivo, charo, chaka lang. Okay, si Sincitia Villar, charo, chaka lang. Sincitia Villar, chaka lang. Alam, ay tatawa ko. Nakatawa ko sa kong John. Sincitia Villar. Okay, alright. Mga ano, kahit anong laan, basta, basta lupa, gagawing subdivision. My God. Alright, anyway. Si Sincitia Villar. Villar. Okay, all right. The last two types of viruses under paramyxo, dagan kayo mga cells, mga viruses under paramyxo, is your human metanumovirus and your Nipah and Hendra virus. Your human metanumo is still the same person-to-person, direct contact secretions, Japan. And for diseases, again, it's usually in infants and children, lower respiratory tract and upper respiratory tract. So URT, upper respiratory tract, to acute LRT, di rin siya katong train, LRT, lower respiratory tract infection. So, non-productive cough, sore throat, wheezing, and congestion, shortness of breath, and maybe similar to an allergy. Alright. So, cell culture, RT-PCR, and of course, fluorescent monoclonal antibodies. The last is your Nipah and Hendra viruses. These are very important viruses, mga emerging po siya na pathogens. These were recently discovered lang in Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, from patients exhibiting encephalitis. So usually, makuha niya from secretions and contact with animals infected by th these virus, especially from bats. No, um, From bats con and consuming food products contaminated with the body fluids of your animals. Contaminated with the body fluids of infected animals. So, or close contact with the person having the virus. For Nipah, it's usually um, bats. For Hendra, okay, uh, it's usually close contact with infected horses. Okay, so, ayan. So, again, disease has flu-like symptoms and it can lead to seizures, encephalitis, and even coma. It can be deadly, all right? So, for diagnosis, it's RT-PCR and ELISA. So, again, these are mga emerging pathogens. First discovered in Malaysia, munang Nipa, and ang Hendra kay sa Australia, all right? So, um, very important. There have been reports na mas impossible po the next na big pandemic niya. So of course, sila po tayong magwish ana no. So very ano gin mga emerging viruses. So kailangan yung pagbantayan din and be careful about it. All right. So that's for the para mixo viridae na family. All right. Okay.